Hi right, guys, in this video, I'm going to cover a couple of questions from the chapter one. The first question is following. Uh, it's about the definition of the unemployment rate, and you should know the definition about the labor force. So the labor force is nothing but number of employed workers plus number of unemployed workers. So that's the definition of the labor force. And after that, you can calculate unemployment rate. So unemployment rate is following. Denominator is the labor force, and the numerator is the number of unemployed. So that being said, you can write down this way, number of unemployed divided by number of employed plus number of unemployed. So then once you get to know this definition, of course, and you need to multiply by 100 because this is a percentage, the unit is a percentage. So the answer is the last one. Labor force that is not, is work, that is not working, that's the unemployment rate. And then the following question here. So it's a very basic question, but it's a little bit confusing because of the last one. So economists use a model. So here the models is a theoretical models in general. And because of the reason they are using the theoretical models, uh, first they can clarify their thinkings, right? And then the second one is uh, show how exogenous variables influence endogenous variables. That's true. And then the last one is true. So then you may say that why they are fun? Well, using economic models can, personal, can be personally rewarding when they help us better prepare for living well in this dynamic world of economy. So that's why the last one is also the answer. All right, so let's move on. All right, so here, uh, I mentioned about the short run and the long run in macroeconomics. So in long run, in macroeconomics, our uh, prices are flexible. In the short run, on the other hand, the prices are sticky. So market clearing models, basically the demand equals the supply, we assume that the prices are flexible. So the first one is answered flexible and are best applied to understand the economy in the long run. Okay? So that's the answer. So flexible, long run, sticky, that's a short run. And the following question, Using a market clearing model, same thing, the demand equals the supply to analyze the labor market is unrealistic because the wages usually change infrequently. Why is that? Because when you get a job, you can think that, well, you make a contract with the employer, right? So within this contract, so let's say that it's a one-year contract, then you cannot change it within one year. That's why using a market clearing model to analyze the labor market is unrealistic because the wages are not changed. That fast okay now the question here an assumption of sticky prices is a more plausible for studying the short run so like i told you sticky price short run right while an assumption of the flexible prices so the answer is that this one flexible prices is more plausible for studying the long run so it's a very simple sticky price short run flexible prices long run Moving on. And then in an economic model, uh, exogenous variable affects the endogenous variable. I'm going to talk about a little bit more with the different questions. Basically, we study about the demand and supply. So Y axis the price of a good or the price level, X axis the quantity of a good or service, or you can think that that's the output in macroeconomics. So we have a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve. So like I told you, and here you can pick up two points such as a, this point is a, a and this point is a B. And you see that when you compare the point A and point B, the coordinate A and coordinate B, coordinate A, the price is a high, quantity demand is low. On the other hand, the point B, price is a low, then the quantity demand is high. So that is a low demand. So that's why we can have the downward sloping demand curve. But these price and quantity, X variable and the Y variable, those are, these are the indulgence variable. On the other hand, there's something that you cannot capture with this price and quantity, that's the exogenous variable. For example, number of consumers. So if there's an increase in number of consumers, then we can expect that this demand curve shift to the right. So the more people, the higher demand. Okay? So that's why here you can see that when the, there are more consumers, then you first think that, well, this demand curve shift to the right like this. Then what do you see? 
well, the price and the quantity, the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity will be increased from the P1, Q1 to P2, Q2, okay? So the point is, when there is change in the exogenous variable, that affects the endogenous variable price and quantity. Okay. All right, so we can talk about the details with an example here. The invention of the new peanut grinding machine reduces the cost of the producing peanut butter. So that affects the demand curve or the supply curve. Well, this one affects the supply, and this is an exogenous change. So because of price, uh, the cost of the purchasing peanut butter is a decrease. That's a good news for supplier, the producers. So that being said, the supply curve shift to the right like this. Then as a result, what do you expect? Price will be decreased from the P1 to P2. And then the quantity, equilibrium quantity, will be increased from the Q1 to Q2. Okay. Move on. Second one. A drop drives up the prices of peanut, an ingredient of peanut butter. So that's a bad news, right? Now this is a positive. So the supply curve shift to the left. That doesn't affect the demand curve at all, right? Because this is about the supply side. So then as a result, price will be increased from the P1 to P2 and the quantity, equilibrium quantity will be decreased from the Q1 to Q2. And question number C, a hurricane destroys the grape crop, driving up the price of the grape jelly, a complement to peanut butter in peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Well, because of this, what happened? This, uh, this is about the peanut butter, right? So this demand curve, supply curve captures the uh, peanut butter. But what happened is that here, grape jelly price is an increase. Right. So then what happened to the, uh, give me one second. So this is a complement, right? So you complements means that you consume together. But since the price of the grape jelly is increased, you, your demand for the grape jelly is decreased. And as a result, because this is a complement, demand is also decreased. So you shift this demand curve to the left. Again, the point is that this is a complement. I mean, the peanut butter and this jelly, grape jelly, they are complements, right? So demand for grape jelly is a decrease. That means that automatically demand for peanut butter is a decrease too. So that's why I shift this demand curve to the left. Then as a result, price is decreased from the P1 to P2. Quantity is a decrease from the Q1 to Q2. And then we have the last question here. A pandemic in the cow population drives up the price of the cheese, a key ingredient of the grilled cheese sandwiches. So that is a substitute for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Now what happened? So here it says that the price of the cheese is an increase, and that's a substitute the peanut butter. So since the price of the cheese increased, you go for the peanut butter and jelly sandwich instead of the uh, this grilled cheese sandwich. Then what happened? The demand shift to the right one more time because at price of you always choose between the cheese grilled cheese sandwich or peanut butter jelly sandwich but you notice that the price of the grilled cheese sandwich is increased then instead it's better to have the peanut butter and jelly cheese uh, sandwich because they are the com uh, substitutes so that means that demand or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches increase, that means that we shift this demand curve to the right like this, okay? Then as a result of what happened, the price is increased from the P1 to P2, and quantity is an increase from Q1 to Q2. And these four are the changes of the exogenous variables, right? It's not about the price and quantity, but that's a result. As a result of this situation, we can see that the price and the quantity is changed, right? So let me go over one more time here. The first question, the invention of the new peanut butter grinding machine is the cost of the producing peanut butter. So that's not the price and that's not the quantity. And it affects the supply, right? 
So that's why the supply curve shift to the right, because of these costs is a decrease, then makes the supplier, the producers can supply more, produce more. So that's why the supply curve shift to the right, as a result, you can see that the price is a decrease and the quantity is increased. So I want you to know the difference between the endogenous variable and the exogenous variable. This event is a change of the exogenous variable that affects this demand curve or the supply curve. But these events affect the supply side only. That's why we shift this supply curve to the right. As a result, the price is decreased and the quantity is increased. Okay. All right, so let me stop here.